Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, obviously, we are going to be doing some soap making. And what you see here is I am mixing up some leftover dried flower petals that we have remaining from the summer garden. And I would challenge you before you click off of this video to go on ahead and watch it all the way through, primarily because this is a really great idea for how to use up some odds and ends herbs and things that you have preserved, but that doesn't seem to be enough when you're cooking or baking or whatever it is. My challenge to you is to go on ahead and save it, put it in a separate bowl somewhere in a jar and add other things to it that you think might smell good together because you can save things like this and put it into a soap and make something really, really wonderful with just some leftovers from around your homestead. Now the next thing that you see here is we are going to go on ahead and we are going to mix together our essential oils. And right now I am mixing together the essential oils that I have as far as companions for the flower mixture that I just made. So I have lavender essential oil, I have chamomile, of course, and then I've got a rose geranium and then a rose auto blend that I put together as well as some cystus. That's a fancy name for Rose of Sharon. Those are the big white leaves that you saw in our flower mixture. But to this, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to add some bergamot just for a little bit of a bright note to mix in with all of these really heavy florals. Once I have that all mixed together, I will be setting that aside to add to our mixture later. You do not want to add your essential oils here at the beginning process that I am about to show you. You want to do that at a later stage so that you don't burn the essential oils. Okay, so let's go on ahead and work on our oil base. So I am doing what I have just termed as our homestead soap. And our homestead soap base is a base of tallow, olive oil, and usually a little bit of goat's milk. Now, depending upon where you live, it may be difficult for you to find goat's milk, especially in the raw milk form. I know it has become very difficult and challenging for us to find that here in our area. So what I have done is I have purchased an organic powdered goat's milk that I will be adding at the end. We don't want to add it here because we don't want to scald that. If you scald it, trust me, it's going to stink more than it already does and that's not something that you want to mess with. And you also don't want to have to worry about any waste. But now that our oils have gotten down to about 82 degrees and as well as the lye mixture, what we are going to do is we are going to mix them together. You can use an immersion blender for this process. I don't have one of those currently, so I'm using this separate stand mixer and I have it on the lowest setting that I can and you want to make sure and mix these together well. Now I have these at a lower temperature because I am adding in the goat's milk powder and I do not want to scald the goat's milk. As I said, scalded goat's milk really does stink. Um, but the main reason is, is when you add the oil with the lye, there's a chemical reaction that happens that increases the heat of your soap base. So what you want to do is you want to keep both of these at the minimum temperature that you can to still get a reaction because that reaction is 
what creates the soap. So you want that chemical reaction, but we want to make sure that it's at a rate where it is not going to, number one, scald the goat's milk. Number two, we don't want it to burn the essential oils. Number three, we also don't want it to potentially degrade any herbal additives that we are putting in, be that a organic clay or if you are adding in dried herbs to your mixture, you want to make sure that you don't have too high of a temperature. So that is why you saw me mixing a little bit longer before adding in the powders and then the essential oils. Okay, so I already have set up here our molds, as you can see, and I have them on a cutting board primarily because with this type of a soap, you're going to need to make sure and get any potential air bubbles out of the soap. You will also need either a sheet of parchment paper, wax paper, whatever you have on hand. You need something between the soap and the towel that you are going to put on because the lye is still technically active in the soap as you are pouring it in and in this state it can eat through the towel. So we don't want you destroying any towels in the making of your soap. So go on ahead and take that precaution. Also it will be helpful when you go to add in the flowers as I am going to be showing you here. So the flower mixture, as you can see, I'm just going on ahead and I am sprinkling into the bottom and I obviously am wearing safety gear. I have gloves on and I am pushing the flower petals into the soap because if you just sprinkle them on top and don't pat them in, or make sure that they are touching the soap, they're just gonna end up falling off when you go to pop them out of the mold and that's not what we want to happen. You will notice when we go to pop these out of the mold that you are going to lose some of the flower product and that's okay. You can set that aside and use that for another project at a later time. That's gonna be a really nice, beautiful bottom addition. There's some people who just don't like the way the bottom of homemade soaps look, especially when poured into molds like this. This is a good way to, I guess you could say, cover up any imperfections, add a little element of your homestead. Okay, and now we're going to go on ahead and we're going to add that parchment paper over the top and then I'm going to press and this will also help the herb product, all of our flower petals in this instance, attach to the soap. You can kind of see we've got a little bit of soap spread. If you look really closely there. And now we're going to put the towel on top and we are going to tuck these babies in for the night. And we will see you back in the morning to pop them out of the mold and see how these turned out. You do not want to leave your soaps in the mold above, well, 48 hours is about the maximum that you want to leave your soap in if you can help it. So go on ahead and pop them out. And see those turned out rather lovely. And now that you have them out, Go on ahead and stick them on a shelf on a corner somewhere out of the way because they are not ready to be used directly on your skin. They still have to go through a cure time. This helps finish evaporating out the last of the lye solution and bringing it down to a skin safe level. Now I try to keep my lye to a minimum amount just so that it can not be so irritating to the skin. You can go on ahead and look up on soap calc what your calculations should be based upon how much oil you are using. So that'll be down in the description below. I'll put that there so it's easy for you to find. And it's really easy. You can just put in what oils you are using, how much you would like to use them at, 
and then it'll calculate everything right down to the lie for you. So we're going to put these on racks and we will just be setting these aside. And I like to leave mine for no less than three weeks. You can leave them for up to six and that is really the optimal and that's usually what I shoot for. So when I'm making soaps, I'm making them at the minimum a month and a half in advance before I need them. Now on the flip side, if you are doing something along the lines of a hand milled or triple milled soap, you wouldn't need to let it sit as long because you've cooked it back down. And that cooking process has allowed the rest of the lye to evaporate out in that instance. So you can have a quicker turnaround on your bar. So instead of having to wait the minimum of three weeks, you could have a soap bar in as little as 10 days at a cure state that you can take to a show or use yourself or gift to friends and family. But this is all that I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it maybe inspired you to use what you have and make something beautiful for yourself, for your friends, for your family, and to enjoy the garden in a different way, especially during this time of the year where we can't necessarily be out in the garden the way that we would like to. This is a good way to remember what came from the garden the year before and to just use it and be grateful for what we have been given. So guys, as always, keep it simple, natural, and essential, and I will see you guys on the next video. Have a great day.